top of the day, beautiful people, top of the day. All right, beautiful people. <laughs> Monday, happy Monday. My background look different, right? Blessings, Levine, Trina, Shayla. My background is different today. Why? Because in our neighborhood last night, a transformer blew up, right? Fire truck was out there. It was on fire. Fire truck was out there hosing it down for a little while. Um, so, which meant that we were without power. And it was extremely hot last night in our house so we dipped we came and got us a hotel room right so that's why you see the different backgrounds today beautiful people but anywho it's monday happy monday it is july the 12th 2021 day yep day 204 of year three of reading through the books of the law and the prophets and of the three year consecutive day count day 873 today we are reading isaiah 58 59 and 60. all right y'all so let's go ahead and get started get started with the shema Hear, therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with you, and that you may increase mightily, as Yahuwah, the Elohim of our fathers, has promised us in the land that flows with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah, our mighty one, he is one. And you shall love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children. And you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gates. And Yahuwah commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear Yahuwah, our mighty one, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before you who are our mighty one as he has commanded us. All right, y'all. Let's get rocking and rolling. Isaiah chapter 58. This is one of my most favorite chapters. I say that about a lot of chapters, don't I? Because all of them be so good. This is the very famous fasting chapter right Isaiah chapter 58 <clears throat> shout with a voice hold on wait a minute hold on. is that the right version yeah okay make sure my version was right shout with a voice of a trumpet blast shout aloud don't be timid tell my people Israel of their sins yet they act so pious they come to the temple every day and seem delighted to learn all about me they act like a righteous nation that would never abandon the laws of its God. They ask me to take action on their behalf, pretending that they want to be near me. We have fasted before you, they say. Why aren't you impressed? We have been very hard on ourselves, and you don't even notice it. I'll tell you why, I respond. It is because you are fasting to please yourselves. Even while you fast, you keep oppressing your workers. What good is fasting when you keep on fighting and quarreling? This kind of fasting will never get you anywhere with me. You humble yourselves by going through the motions of penance, bowing your heads like reeds bending in the wind. You dress in burlap and cover yourself with, and cover yourselves with ashes. Is this what you call fasting? Do you really think this will please Yahuwah? No, this is the kind of fasting I want. Free those who are wrongly imprisoned. Lighten the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind people. Share your food with the hungry and give shelter to the homeless. 
Give clothes to those who need them and do not hide yourselves from relatives who need your help. Then your salvation will come like the dawn and your wounds will heal quickly. Your godliness will lead you forward and the glory of Yahuwah will protect you from behind. Then when you call, I will answer. Yes, I am here. He will quickly reply. Remove the heavy yoke of oppression. Stop pointing your finger and spreading vicious rumors. Feed the hungry and help those in trouble. Then your light will shine out from the darkness, and the darkness around you will be as bright as noon. Yahuwah will guide you continually, giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. Some of you will rebuild the deserted ruins of your cities. Then you will be known as a rebuilder of walls and a restorer of, of homes. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Don't pursue your own interests on that day, but enjoy the Sabbath and speak of it with delight as Yahuwah's holy day. Honor the Sabbath in everything you do on that day and don't follow your own desires or talk idly. Then Yahuwah will be your delight. I will give you great honor and satisfy you with the inheritance I promised to your ancestor Jacob. I, Yahuwah, have spoken. That seems pretty clear, doesn't it? Shalom, mom. Shalom. Auntie. Vanessa Brown. Can you give her hand? Isaiah chapter 59. Warnings against sin. Listen, Yahuwah's arm is not too weak to save you nor his ear too deaf to hear you call. It's your sins that have cut you off from Yahuwah. Because of your sins, he has turned away and will not listen anymore. Your hands are the hands of murderers, and your fingers are filthy with sin. Your lips are full of lies, and your mouth spews corruption. No one cares about being fair and honest. The people's lawsuits are based on lies. They conceive evil deeds and then give birth to sin. They hatch deadly snakes and weave spiders' webs. Whoever eats their eggs will die. Whoever cracks them will hatch a viper. Their webs can't be made into clothing, and nothing they do is productive. All their activity is filled with sin, and violence is their trademark. Their feet run to do evil, and they rush to commit murder. They think only about sinning. Misery and destruction always follows them. They don't know where to find peace or what it means to be just and good. They have mapped out crooked roads and no one who follows them knows a moment's peace. So there is no justice among us and we know nothing about right living. We look for light but only find darkness. We look for bright skies but walk in gloom. We grope like the blind along a wall, feeling our way like people without eyes. Even at brightest noontime, we stumble as though it were dark. Among the living, we are like the dead. We growl like hungry bears. We moan like mournful doves. We look for justice, but it never comes. We look for rescue, but it is far away from us. For our sins are piled up before Yahuwah and testify against us. Yes, we know what sinners we are. We know we have rebelled and denied Yahuwah. We have turned our backs on Yahuwah. We know how unfair and oppressive we have been, carefully planning our deceitful lies. Our courts oppose the righteous, and justice is nowhere to be found. Truth stumbles in the streets, and honesty has been outlawed. Yes, truth is gone, and anyone who renounces evil is attacked. Yahuwah looked and was displeased to find that there was no justice. He was amazed to see that no one intervened to help the oppressed. So he himself stepped in to save them with his strong arm, and his justice sustained him. He put on righteousness as his body armor and placed the helmet of salvation on his head. He clothed himself with a robe of vengeance and wrapped himself in a cloak of divine passion. He will repay his enemies for their evil deeds. His, his fury will fall on his foes. He will pay them back even to the ends of the earth. In the West, the people will respect the name of Yahuwah. 
in the east they will glorify him for he will come like a raging flood tide driven by the breath of Yahuwah. The Redeemer will come to Jerusalem to buy back those in Israel who have turned from their sins, says Yahuwah. And this is my covenant with them, says Yahuwah. My spirit will not leave them, and neither will these words I have given you. They will be on your lips and on the lips of your children and your children's children forever. I, Yahuwah, have spoken. Mm. We sound like the children's children, children's 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 children, right? On our lips for ever. Last chapter for today, Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, Jerusalem, let your light shine for all to see. For the glory of Yahuwah rises to shine on you. Darkness as black as night covers all the nations of the earth. But the glory of Yahuwah rises and appears over you. All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see your radiance. Look and see, for everyone is coming home. Your sons are coming from distant lands. Your little daughters will be carried home. Your eyes will shine and your heart will thrill with joy. For merchants around the world will come to you. They will bring you the wealth of many lands. I mean, this is, remember, this is as Yahuwah's people is returning home. Not off up in heaven somewhere, right? Back to the land that was promised to them, which is why it's called the promised land. Shalom, Josiah. Your sons and daughters, I'm sorry, your sons are coming from distant lands. Your little daughters will be carried home. Your eyes will shine and your heart will thrill with joy. For merchants from around the world will come to you. They will bring you the wealth of many lands. Vast caravans of camels will converge on you, the camels of Midian and Ephah. The people of Sheba will bring gold and frankincense and will come worshiping Yahuwah. The flocks of Kedar will be given to you. The rams of Neboth will be bought from my altars. I will accept their offerings and I will make my temple glorious. Remember, here's the part on how Israel is getting home. Listen. And what do I see flying like clouds to Israel, like doves to their nests? They are ships from the ends of the earth, from lands that trust in me, led by the great ships of Tarshish. They are bringing the people of Israel home from far away, carrying their gold, carrying their silver and gold. They will honor you who are your God, the Holy One of Israel. For he has, spilled, he has spilled you with splendor. Foreigners will come to rebuild your towns, and their kings will serve you. For though I have destroyed you in my anger, I will now have mercy on you through my grace. Your gates will stay open day and night to receive the wealth of many lands. The kings of the world will be led as captives in a victory procession. For the nations that refuse to serve you will be destroyed. The glory of Lebanon will be yours. The forests of cypress, fir, and pine to beautify my sanctuary. My temple will be glorious. The descendants of your tormentors will come and bow before you. Those who despise you will kiss your feet. They will call you the city of Yahuwah and Zion, the Holy One of Israel. Though you were once despised and hated, <clears throat> with no one traveling through you, I will make you beautiful forever, a joy to all generations. Powerful kings and mighty nations will satisfy your every need, as though you were a child nursing at the breast of a queen. You will know that at last that I, Yahuwah, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Israel. So how he said, we're going to know at last when all these things begin to come to pass, right? The nations are going to bring us home. All the nations will come and bow before us and they're literally going to be at our, I guess you can say, they're going to be at our beck and call, right? Everything. They, he said they are going to satisfy your every need as though you were a child 
nursing at the breast of a queen, right? You will know at last that I, Yahuwah, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Israel. So at that point, we're going to realize when all the nations begin to bow and recognize who Yahuwah's people really are, right? I will exchange your bronze for gold, your iron for silver, your wood for bronze, and your stones for iron. I will make peace your leader and righteousness your ruler. Violence will disappear from your land, and desolation and destruction of war will end. Salvation will surround you like city walls, and praise will be on the lips of all who enter there. No longer will you need the sun to shine by day, nor the moon give its light by night. For Yahuwah, your God, will be your everlasting light, <clears throat> and your God will be your glory. Your sun will never set. Your moon will not go down. For Yahuwah will be your everlasting light. Your days of mourning will come to an end. It's pretty much saying that we will have good times. Not that the moon is the moon and the sun are going to stop shining. That is not what that's saying, right? It is pretty much saying that life is going to be really good for us, right? It's like the sun shall never set on Wakanda, right? Your sun will never set. Your moon will not go down. For Yahuwah will be your everlasting light. Your days of mourning will come to an end. All your people will be righteous. They will possess their land forever. For I will plant them there with my own hands in order to bring myself glory. The smallest family will become a thousand and the tiniest group will become a mighty nation. At the right time, I, Yahuwah, will make it happen. Right? All right. So that's good, y'all. Okay. So let's go ahead and hop on over here to Fossilized Customs. And I'm not sure if this is like glitching or anything. I'm using a hotel's, uh, well, not really. I'm not using a hotel's Wi Fi. For some reason, it wouldn't connect. Um, so I had to connect to my phone, but I had a little bit of issue on Facebook and YouTube starting it up. It was saying it wasn't um, wasn't able to stream. So nobody said anything. So I think we're okay, right? Remember, if you missed it at the beginning, we got a different background. We're in a hotel because a transformer blew up in our neighborhood yesterday and took out the power for blocks, right? So I think they actually got it repaired and it was extremely hot. It was extremely hot in our house last night. So we packed it up. We came and got a room. Um, but I looked at our ring. Our ring is back on, and I looked and I saw, um, like, 5 o'clock this morning, I checked it. And I seen, like, the neighbor's porch lights and looked like some of their living room lights and stuff was on. So, I think it's back on. We'll, we'll check it here shortly, right? Okay. So, we paused yesterday on page 229. Okay, and we was going through um, like the mystery of iniquity, the mystery of lawlessness. And we know that the mystery of lawlessness is what they tell you. Well, the, the secret of lawlessness called the mystery of iniquity. That what? That you who was laws is done away with. That's what it is right there. And when you believe that, you by default receive the strong delusion, right? Which is most of what the world is still in, in the strong delusion. I say time has fooled the entire world, right? Okay. Let's see. All right. So let's start the paragraph where it says it's the, the third paragraph. Yahuwah enables us to love the commandments by his supernatural power. This is a light yoke, but when it com but it comes with worldly costs attached, persecution for righteousness' sake. His criticism of those of his religion in that time was only concerning the things that were added by human tradition. He did not found or in or invent any new religion at all. So it's talking about in the New Testament when Yahushua was when JC was walking around. Excuse me. Second, the renewed covenant is having the Torah 
written on our hearts as you will see if you read jeremiah 31 hebrews chapter 8 and chapter 10. our hearts mean our thoughts the same laws more accurately teachings are written on our heart by Yahuwah's Spirit, enabling us to love them. This is what happened for the first time at Pentecost. He said, if you love me, guard my commandments. When we are convicted of our sinfulness, we are to repent of our sins and obey. The Torah, in the parentheses, it has 10 commandments, define what sin is. 1 John 3 and 4. Please read 1 John chapter 3, verses 22 through 24. And see if anything harmonizes with what we're discussing here. <clears throat> Try to find in scripture where legalism, according to Torah, not human traditions, is ever a problem for anyone's salvation. Human legalism is rampant. Look at Sunday, Easter, Christmas, and so on. These things are invented by men and are not found anywhere in scripture. Hanukkah is found in John 19.22. If you don't observe the traditions, you're considered strange. They are men's laws or legalism. It's lawlessness, the ignoring of the Torah that will condemn us. And this is what Satan has been so successful in promoting. My words here are not enough to convince. You must look up the scriptures I've quoted. Look also at James chapter 1 verse 23 and the entire chapter 2 where faith is perfected by works we show our faith by our obedience this is not in conflict with ephesians chapter 2 because the gift of our because the gift is our faith which enables us to do good works such as observe the torah read ephesians chapter 2 8 through 13 carefully the unconverted human who is still in the mind of the flesh interprets the scriptures seeking out lawlessness from the dark point of view and will not submit to the Torah of Yahuwah, nor can it do so. But the mind of the spirit enables us to obey because we agree with the Torah and love it. I love the commandments of Yahuwah and teach them. Yahusha told us that whosoever keeps and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom, but whosoever knows the least of them will be the least. Romans chapter six through eight, will explain the renewed covenant to you the denominations each have their seminaries where they train young ministers according to their denominations list of excuses for not obeying each denomination has their own peculiar list of excuses and when these excuses are learned well enough by the seminary student then they're granted their ordination to speak for the denomination when you enter into the renewed covenant fully, you will hear anti-Mashiach each time you listen to such men. <clears throat> Ain't that the truth? Seeing with eyes filled with light, and in parentheses beside light, it has Torah, right? You will be enabled to love the Torah and love obeying. Your ears will be open. Yahuwah is near. Ask him to reveal the truth to you and write his perfect Torah on your heart. Then you will begin an incredible task he has prepared just for you to go and teach others all he has commanded and immerse, and immerse them into his name, Yahuwah. <clears throat> you will see your teachers, and in parentheses beside teachers, it has the commandments because the commandments literally do become your teachers, right? You will see your teachers, the commandments, and hear the voice behind you saying, this is the way walk in it that's found in isaiah chapter 30 verses 21. you will love obeying your obedience is your way of showing you who is that you love him it is evidence of your salvation the serpent is still lying to us from the tree this time let's not listen to the wrong voice we can choose to obey and the dragon was enraged with the man and he went to fight with the remnant of her seed those guarding the commands of Yahuwah and possessing, yeah, see, this part shouldn't even be added, right? It's just those <laughs> guarding the commands of Yah, right? That's Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. See also Revelation chapter 14 and 12. I'll read that again. 
And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to fight with the remnant of her seed, those guarding the commands of Yahuwah. Next section. The remnant obeys and believes. Those who don't understand very deeply are very often those we are sent to, but few usually show any signs of real brain activity related to the spiritual things we have described. The words of life we carry are eternal, but they don't always drink from them, being not thirsty. Hebrews 4 and 2, it helps them. Sorry. Hebrews 4 verse 2 helps explain it. For indeed, we have had good news preached to us, just as they also, but the word they heard did not profit them, because it was not united by faith in those who heard. For we have believed, for we who have believed enter that rest. This text specifies the seventh day as the commemoration of creation, honoring Yahuwah by resting as he rested. The word equals Torah or commandments. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 through 10 explains how our faith is Yahuwah's gift, opening our minds to truth. 2 Timothy 3, 5 tells us that people in the last days will be holding to a form of piety, although they have denied its power, which is dynamic, dunamis, dynamic, intensity, force, mechanism, process, capability, ableness, right? And that's what power means. And avoid such men as these. This would mean that we should not give up until we see that they deny the relevance, ability, and authority of the Torah, and they attempt to repel it. This condition of their heart will bring upon them the strong delusion because they did not receive a love for the truth or the Torah, which we see explained at two, at Second Thessalonians chapter 2. The apostasy calls a falling away from truth long ago and now the mystery of iniquity or lawlessness is being revealed exposing the lie the lie being you do not have to obey right that's the lie that's the lie the lie is that is done away with and you do, you no longer have to obey it that is a lie right this lie spoken to the first woman is what christianity is predicated on simply because they have not understood what the renewed covenant is having the torah written on our hearts being circumcised by the action of the spirit of yahuwah in us we become the children of yahuwah through the covenant made with abraham only when we obey the covenant doing what abraham did his name abraham means father of nations and so we may not descend from the tribe of judah but from but from some other lost tribe or house of Israel. Even wild branches can be engrafted among the natural ones, so we must be accepting of all other children of Yahuwah who love the covenant. And father of many nations doesn't just mean like many nations within our family. Many nations means just that, many nations, not just us, but people of all nations all over the world different colors and creeds those are different nations of people and abraham would be the father of many nations meaning that you know the whole thing israel shall be a light to the nations like we're literally a light set upon the hill for everybody to see to give light to all that's what abraham or his lineage would be to all the nations we would be the light to the world teaching them the truth returning them to the true creator of their souls right yahuwah the yeast of the pharisees this is the next section we're going to see many christians of every description coming out of their congregations in the coming years as they move toward the torah learn the name and realize who they are in yahuwah they will engraft into israel and know they are branches in the olive tree and one of the sticks or trees of Ezekiel chapter 37. As you know, there is simultaneously a growing interest in the Talmud, or the Talmud is like the oral law, the oral law, Mishnah, or Gemara, 
among the Messianic Nazarene. The Talmud, the Talmud costs several thousand dollars for a complete set of its volumes. Many defend its validity for study since it does provide a great deal of insight into what certain things meant to those living long ago. I, for one, understand that it was over the oral laws that Yahushua had many disputes with the Pharisees, although they were close in so many other ways. These customs of the elders, which added to the Torah, conflicted with the Torah, replaced it, and added burdens to the light yoke, right? So, which is, like y'all heard me say, like, even um, when we were going to, like, the, the this Messianic congregation, um, some of the things that they add, I'm like, this is too much. That's when I realized a lot of times, although they have the Torah, y'all, sometimes they don't even, even the Messianic congregations, right? The, uh, the Jewish people, they read more from the Talmud than anything. I'm like, what, 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 what is this? Right? So I'm just like, I'm like, look, that's too much. It's, it, Yahuwah just made it real simple, right? So... I ain't, I ain't really got nothing bad to say except for like you say right here it just add a whole another level of different rules and stuff upon people it's like you got to do it in this specific way just like this right here but y'all never said that he just simply said rest right just and when you hear rest i'm like lay down in bed go to sleep chilling out right leave me alone i ain't doing nothing right yeah so it, it just it it to me it Although it seems like it answers every single question and not necessarily it gives you detailed instructions, it, it kind of gets people in that it's almost like it traps you in like another religious type mode to where things have to be done certain ways all the time. What's wrong? What? Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Y'all came here, face all toe up. Okay. Shh. All right, y'all. When it really doesn't have to be that way, you know. Um. So everything you would said is 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 just simple, right? So just keep it like that. If you say rest, just sit down, chill out, go to sleep, sleep in, rest, right? Okay. <clears throat> they just walk back in. So. Okay. These customs of the elders, which added to the Torah, conflicted with the Torah, replaced it, and added burdens to the light yoke. The Talmud seems to be the best candidate among us for being the yeast of the Pharisees, since from these early Pharisees, all of rabbinical Judaism sprang forth. The love of the older brother, the nations of Judah, must be maintained because anyone who does not love his brother does not have the love of Yahuwah, but that doesn't mean we have to love the teachings or the yeast of the Talmud also. Remember the parable of the two brothers. Mm -hmm. Yahushua gave us the warning to beware of this yeast. His students thought he was talking about bread and at first didn't understand what he meant. We all need to stay vigilant and not be deceived or misled by teachings from the Talmud. The prohibition of uttering the name comes from the Talmud. It adds to the words of the Torah. It's human error disguised as truth. Some try to justify using the spelling of Yahweh by citing the Jewish encyclopedia, yet it is obvious this is just a shade away from the actual sound because the Talmud prohibits the utterance of the name, right? And the Jewish scholars reverse I'm sorry, and the Jewish scholars revere Talmud. I don't mean to be critical of those who believe Yahweh is the most correct sound. It's just that there should be three syllables. And the litmus test is another Hebrew word, Yehuda. The same letters in the same order with an added dialect. The word Yahuda is the doorway to the actual sound. Anything adding to Anything adding to the Torah is leaven. The oral law became Babylonian Talmud and the Jerusalem Talmud made up the Mishnah and the Gemara. These pharis pharisaical sources 
were the seeds of rabbinical Judaism. Paul spoke of his former way of life in Yahudism as being under the teachings of the fathers. See Galatians chapter 1 verse 13. When Yahushua told us, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, Luke chapter 12 verse 1, Mark chapter 8 verse 15, Matthew chapter 16 verse 6, he was describing the added human traditions called the traditions of the elders, as well as all the future developments like the mysticisms of the Zohar, Kabbalah, and the Sefer Yetzirah, or, which means the oral laws, invented to put a fence around the Torah. The Torah specifically prohibits adding to Yahuwah's words, which the Talmud in fact does, puffing up the Torah. All Yahuwah's words were read aloud in the hearing of the people, so that eliminates any oral words transmitted down to us. Moshe wrote all the words of Yahuwah. Those in certain messianic circles have traditionally shunned pronouncing the name aloud in order to avoid offending their fellows who adhere to the Talmudic prohibition against the name they prefer the traditional titles instead. Essentially, they are no namers and the memorial name for all generations. Exodus chapter 3 verses 13 through 15 is unknowable for them. They forsake the feelings of our father Yahuwah in deference to pleasing their fellow man. This is the root of some of the division among us we are not in unity because we have not kept away from the leaven of the Pharisees, which is the Talmud. Many of the false teaching authorities are constantly popping up like weeds. When we shun the name, remember the name is Yahuwah. When we shun the name, we cannot be in unity. We are divided over the name. Those who use it are sometimes dubbed cultists and heretics. Rabbinical Judaism stemmed directly from the Pharisees and is as and is just as filled with errors of the oral law as ever. The Karites are the doctrinal descendants of the Sadducees and don't hold to the oral traditions, yet came out of Rabbinical Judaism around 767 CE. There hold on. There found was Anan, who adopted the sighted moon crescent to begin each month. This practice is Islamic. The customs, traditions of the fathers, man-made traditions from the oral law, were the hypocrisy which Yahushua kept bringing up to the Pharisees and Sadducees. The Talmud oral law is not a teaching authority for Nazarene. Quoting from it should be done with words of warning. Among other things, it states that Miriam was a prostitute and that Yahushua was the bastard son of a Roman soldier. It's something kind of like that. But I don't think Miriam was a prostitute though, right? We can read anything, but we must be discerning. Yahuwah's Yuhu, spirit indwells and he, will and he will guide us into all that is true. When he told his pupils beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, it was the leaven or puffing up and the adding that was their main stumbling block. And it's the oral traditions. Sure, there are many historical explanations found buried in Talmudic sources, but they are also dark mixtures of Kabbalistic influences as well. It speaks of when to stone blasphemers. Pronouncing the name is, bla is blasphemy to this work of hypocrisy, this idol to men's wisdom. Yahudim mysticism and other Babylonian or Chaldean synchronisms are blended into the Talmud, coming from the Zohar, Bahir, and Sefer Yetzirah, or the Book of Creation. These influences gave rise to the customs like washing the fingertips before eating to wash away evil spirits. The bottom line is, the Torah forbids studying other sources and mixing them into the worship of Yahuwah. See Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 28 through 32. 
which is also why we cannot observe Christmas, Easter, and other things like Sunday. Torah, Yahuwah's word or teaching, instructs us not to add or take away from the Torah, and the leaven of the Talmud is exactly this. Whether or not a pastor, rabbi, teacher, or leader sees it this way, all the words of Yahuwah were read aloud in the hearing of the people. There are no words that were oral. This is the only traditional mindset of flawed, misguided men. Torah knows nothing of the Talmud and makes no reference to any of the books I've cited. The Talmud is okay to own and read, but we have no time to use it as study material when Yahuwah told us to be beware of it. The only thing it is good for understanding what went wrong with Yahudism and mainly the Talmud oral law is what went wrong. This is the source that people get many ideas foreign to scripture. The religion of Judaism follow along the lines of pharisaical teachings and the Talmud became the record book of their decisions over the centuries. There is the Jerusalem Talmud and the Babylonian Talmud. If any group leader is insisting on spending any time on it as serious study and not exposing the problems with it in spite of the dangers, this letter should be taken to group. This letter should be taken to the group to make sure it is well understood what is happening among everyone. You can't mix clean water and poison together and drink it. Even pagan religions had some truth in them. The Babylonians simply mix truth and error together as we see religions have continued to do down through the ages. As we hear Yahuwah's words ringing in our ears telling us to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, we should apply this to any human traditions that have become adopted by the leaders of our faith. We should contend for the true and pure faith, purging out the fossilized customs of our forefathers, not adhering to the traditions of the fathers, will bring us under severe persecution, and we will not be understood by the majority of those living in the flesh. Okay, we'll read this section for um, the Sabbath day. The test of the Sabbath day. A week or Shabua, Shabua in Hebrew means a week. A week, Shabua, is a repeating cycle of seven days. The first week of creation was a real week. If it was not a real week, it makes no sense that we rest for the last day, 24 hours of each week. The a week of seven days foreshadows the seven millennia, 7,000 years. The manna, one of the items in the ark, serves as a witness for us. I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day that I may test them whether or not they will walk in my instruction. That's found in Exodus chapter 16 verses 4 and you can also see Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 2 and 3 also beware that you are not ensnared to follow them after they are destroyed before you and that you do not inquire after their Allahim saying how do these nations serve their Allahim that I may do likewise you shall not behave thus toward you who are your Allahim for every abominable act which Yahuwah hates, they have done for their Allahim. Whatever I command you, you shall be careful to do. You shall not add to nor take away from it. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 30 through 32. Circumcision and immersion. This is a question from Australia. Some of the new believers here are wondering about circumcision. I know that you say it is of the heart and I agree with you. And here is his response. On physical circumcision, most understand the perpetual aspect of this covenant sign as being the physical man-made activity in the flesh. As you know, the Council of Believers and Elders at Acts chapter 15 reviewed this issue concerning the Gentiles turning to Allahim, the ones who want to boast in one's flesh 
see the four beginning elements for Gentiles to observe at Acts chapter 15 and assume that they will hear Moshe read in the synagogues and then have themselves circumcised eventually in their flesh. Galatians chapter 2 verses 3 and 4 informs us, but not even Titus who was with me, though a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. But as for the false brothers, sneaking brought i'm sorry but at but as for the false brothers sneakingly brought in who sneak in to spy out our freedom which we have in mashiach in order to enslave us to these did we not yield in subjection not even for an hour so that the truth of the besorah remains in you or so that the truth of the gospel remains in you the condition of one's flesh is not going to count for anything, and it is not through human, human effort that we are called, chosen, and delivered. Our immersion into the water is the outward sign of our circumcision of our heart. Romans chapter 2, verses 25 through 29 are verses so important to notice since we can see that it is really the heart where our real decision must come from. For circumcision indeed profits you if you practice the Torah, but if you are a transgressor of the Torah, your circumcision has become uncircumcision. So if an uncircumcised one watches over the righteousness of the Torah, shall not his uncircumcision be reckoned as circumcision? And the uncircumcised by nature, or physically uncircumcised, who perfects the Torah shall judge you who notwithstanding letter and circumcision are a transgressor of the Torah. For he is not a Hebrew who is so outwardly, neither is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. But a Hebrew is he who is so inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart and spirit, not literally, whose praise is not from men, but from Yahuwah. And it says, explanation continues into Romans chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 19 and Colossians chapter 2 verses 11 should give anyone pause who seeks to have their flesh circumcised, thinking Yahuwah would count our flesh as anything. So I, I get what he's saying. So he's saying, um, okay, some people are saying you can just get circumcised, right? You can just get circumcised and you'll be good. But clearly we know that's not the case because here in America they circumcise you right out the womb right fresh out the womb maybe day two day three they circumcise you but you can still live like the sons and daughters of hell I mean well women aren't circumcised but you get what I'm saying you can be physically circumcised in your flesh but still be uncircumcised in your heart and you are still even even if you're a blood-born Hebrew of the true bloodline and circumcised in your flesh it really it really does i agree with that it counts for nothing if you're not keeping to the laws of torah or keeping you who is instruction on how to live on this earth and how to treat your fellow brothers and sisters right so you'll be counted just like you who never even knew you right like you were not a true son and daughter it's because your actions show that you are not a part of this family right those who actually keep you who is commands he said those are the ones who truly love me right they keep my commands if you love me keep my commands right so it doesn't matter i mean he commands it but even and we can clearly see because they kept getting kicked out and all of them were circumcised you know and clearly so we know you who has a problem with just outward actions and not truly keeping it from the heart right that's what he was constantly saying to them all the time so i agree with what they're saying here kathy hey sis all right I read this again. Um, yes, baby. Um, yes. First, took my gun. Okay, that is right there. What's we'll your dad? <laughs> Josh, give her her gun back. First Corinthians chapter seven verse nineteen and Colossians chapter two eleven should give anyone pause who seeks to have their flesh circumcised, thinking Yahuwah would count our flesh as anything. The whole book of Galatians is about circumcision and is addressed to the Gentiles there who put their hope in the wrong understanding of the renewed covenant. Romans chapter 4 verses 11 through 12 show clearly that our faith is our justification and even this is not of ourselves. Notice these words. 
second i'm sorry colossians chapter 2 11 through 13. in him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands in the putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Yahuwah. Uh, yeah, see, this is a little mixture right here. Hold on. It's talking about the the death and the, the resurrection, right? On the cross, it's, it's, it's a little bit of mixture in here. Um, put off the body of sins. He could use another verse for this. Hold on. I think another verse for me. Yeah, see, you don't even need all that to understand that point. Okay. Okay, so let's, this is thoroughly mixed. So let's just skip this verse right here. He used second, uh, I'm sorry, Colossians chapter 2, 11 through 13, which is talking about you dying. Use an example with JC dying on the cross, being like when you're circumcised, they, you know how they paired it together by you baptizing yourself or being immersed in what it symbolizes what he did on the cross when he was crucified, was buried, and raised on the third day, right? But which is it's not what you who would say, right? So we're gonna forego this scripture right here, right? And we're just gonna go over here to the next page. This act of immersion is clearly what represents our circumcision as the outward sign or act of our faith now, indicating the circumcision of Yahuwah. Men boasting in one another's flesh are missing the whole spiritual point. If we have received Yahuwah's spirit, we are his, and he has circumcised our hearts with our love for truth and a love for his Torah. Adult male converts don't need to have an operation. This sign of the Abrahamic covenant is prescribed for our newborn males, not adults. I was circumcised as a baby, and my boys were also. It is a health decision, too. But I feel it is right to obey the physical command of our newborn children as we are believers. But if an uncircumcised adult repents and turns to Torah, I would never recommend them to be physically obliged to do this when the writings clearly express it is nothing. Our immersion acts as the outward sign covenant, acts as the outward covenant sign of the circumcision of our heart. Paul declared that those who disturb the new Gentile believers with circumcision of the flesh should emasculate themselves, completely cut off everything. And you can find that in Galatians chapter 5, verse 12. Biting and devouring one another over these things is very wrong, so I don't involve myself in these disputes, knowing the end would be controversy and division, which Yahuwah hates. Those of the other opinion are working through these matters and still have much to learn, as do we all. As Jacob says, we stumble in many matters. Colossians chapter 2 verse 16 needs to be looked at in various translations. The easiest one to read the added words is the KJV since they italicize the words they have added. The body of Mashiach is all it should say. Paul is referring to the food, drink, festivals, appointed high Sabbaths, for instance, new moons and Sabbaths, as things which are a shadow of things to come. He is not saying they are annulled, as in the NIV footnotes will claim they are. For example, if you consider the book of Luke, for example, if you consider the book, Luke wrote what we call Acts, the word Sabbath, what? Hold on. For example, if you consider the book Luke, he, ain't no more in there. They, they missing a comma, y'all. But say, go this Y'all really just, didn't y'all get something to drink when y'all was down there? 
They didn't get anything to drink. They just ate. Chill, y'all. Okay. For example, if you consider the book Luke wrote, we call Acts the word Sabbath. What? This this punctuation. For example, if you consider the book Luke wrote, we call Acts. The word Sabbath is used often, and this record to Theophilus was written in 28 chapters, 31 years after the resurrection and ascension of Yahushua. You will notice situation describing Gentiles and the synagogues on the Sabbath day, hearing the Torah and prophets read aloud, because the vast majority of attendees were in fact Gentile converts, much different from today. The use of the word shadow implies that these things will become clearer realities in our understanding of them one day. The reality or substance determined from the shadow they are casting must be of extremely great importance, so it would be very unwise to dismiss them as mere shadows. And Paul said they represented shadows of what is to come. They are here to teach us something. They are not here for us to cast them aside. Galatians, a book often referred to as proof that we are not obliged to obey the commandments. Simply put, this book is speaking about one thing, circumcision of the flesh. Paul opens and closes with it. Chapter 2, verses 3. This is talking about Galatians. All of these. Galatians chapter 2, verses 3. Chapter 2, verse 7. 8, 9, verse 12. Chapter 5, verse 3, 6. 11 chapter 6 verses 12 13 and 15 this is so misunderstood the law of circumcision of the flesh is what paul is talking about he is not in any way referring to the covenant the moral laws which define sin we are circumcised by the spirit of yahuwah in our hearts and you should read more on this to explain it thoroughly by examining romans chapter 2 verses 28 and 29 first corinthians chapter 7 verse 19 colossians verses 11 through 13 our circumcision is of and by the spirit of yahuwah not made with hands the outward act of obedience representing our circumcision is our immersion or baptism but our circumcision is done to us by yahuwah in our heart when he writes his commandments on our heart. This is the renewed covenant. Our obedience to his commandments is an outward sign that we love him, but it also proves that we are being saved by him. It is evidence of our salvation and his work in us. When we realize he is in us, we can love his commandments and obey them out of love. When we love him enough to obey him, he will write them on our hearts. Those who will not obey him will not receive his spirit. Acts chapter 5 verse 32. He who turns away his ear from hearing the Torah, even his prayer is an abomination. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 9. Listen to me, you who know righteousness, a people in whose heart is my Torah. Do not fear the reproach of men, nor be afraid of their revilings. Isaiah chapter 51 and 7. The following issue is something that has arisen once the fourth edition of fossilized customs that is of great importance to everyone being seduced by it. What? Hold on. The following issue is something that has arisen since the fourth edition of fossilized customs that is of great importance to everyone being seduced by it. This new wind of doctrine is extremely divisive and is rapidly becoming a new custom within our generation. We must watch and stand fast and hold to the traditions which we were taught and be without wrath and disputing. See 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 15, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and 8. Now for the lunar Sabbath era. And that's what we'll pause at for today. We'll pick this back up. So actually, this last little three sentences I should have just saved for tomorrow because this is a part of going into the lunar Sabbath and the um, 
the moon phases and the weeks and stuff, right? Okay, y'all. So with that being said, I hope y'all enjoyed the reading for today. We started on page 229 and we paused on page 236. We read Isaiah 58, 59, and 6. And guys, it is Monday, July the 12th, 2021, day 204 of year 3 of reading through the books of the Law and the Prophets. And of the three-year consecutive day count, day 873. Let's go ahead and do the blessing. So we can get out of here. Everybody can get about their day. It's 817. I know some people got to get to work. Some people on their way to work. Some people might already be at work. If you're already at work and you're supposed to be on the clock, run down to Caesar what is doing to Caesar, right? All right, the blessing is found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. Remember, the first 21 verses is the Nazarite vow. Man or woman can take it. And you who have spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise, ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, May you who will bless us and keep us. May you who will make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May you who will lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. All right, beautiful people. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I will see y'all back here tomorrow morning, bright and early, 7.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Peace.